Paul is writing. And these words, sometimes you put them together, they're hard to do. You put joy and tribulation, those two naturally, without any divine intervention, they don't mix. Joy, tribulation. You don't put those two. You can put joy, laughter, you know, fun. You, you don't put tribulation, you know, you put tribulation with sadness and tribulation with crying. And, but you don't put it with joy unless there's something else intervening within you to be able to get joy out of tribulation. Those two don't naturally go together. Listen to what the word says. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom, what? Uh-huh. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Rejoice in hope of the glory of God and not only so but we glory in tribulations also knowing that what uh huh experience and experience hope and hope does what why because in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which given unto us. For when we were yet what? Without sin. Without what? Strength in Christ did what? Mm. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet. Preadventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us. In that is how he did it. While we were yet sinners, Christ did what? Mm, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. From all of that, I want to talk from these three words. Joy in tribulation. Say it with me. Joy in tribulation. Joy in tribulation. Or joy in suffering. Suffering with joy. Suffering while you know, you're in. You're dealing with trouble, but you're still praising God. I had to learn how to suffer and give God glory. Suffer. Go through, but while you're going through, you give God glory. Meaning that whatever I wrestle with, whatever I face, I face it with the intent that God is going to be magnified and glorified in my life while I deal with this unpleasant situation. Or while I, I, I deal with things that would normally cause a different reaction. Because trouble normally brings a negative reaction. But because there are a, there's a, divine, uh, a, a divine aspect of your life that empowers you to have joy in tribulation. Without that divine intervention, without the Holy Spirit abiding in you, you cannot joy in tribulation. You will get mad. You get up and say, well, other folk, because you're going through. But when I can deal with situations and which, which, which I may not have had anything to do with causing, but yet I'm going through and still have joy while I go through, there must be a relationship with my God that fuels me to do that. I've got to be connected with Jesus to be able to have joy in tribulation. And my connection with Jesus is that when I look at what 
he has done for me, what he has done for you, then you realize that, hey, I would not be where I am today if it had not been for Jesus. I would not be in the direction I'm going in if it had not been for Jesus. What did he do for us? He paid the price for our sins. He completely cleared our tab. We no longer owe that debt. He paid for our sins all we had committed. And those that we were wrestling with now, somebody say, have mercy, Lord. And those you are going to wrestle with in the future, he has already paid for those sins. His blood has already covered your sin. That does not mean you have a right to intentionally go ahead on and sin. It just means that your sins have been covered by his blood. And before... Jesus covered our blood. We did not have access to the Father. We had to go to the priest. And the priest had to go into the Holy of Holies for us. And then we could take our burden to the priest and the priest to the Lord. But since Jesus came and when Jesus died on that cross... When he died on that cross, the veil in that temple that separated the people from the Holy of Holies, where the priest would go in, that veil was rent from top to bottom. That means now no longer do we need the priest to go in. We can now go in boldly for ourselves. Can I get a witness? So we don't need nobody else to call on Jesus for us. We can talk to him for ourselves. Somebody say, I can talk for me. Yeah, I can talk for me. I, I, I don't know about you, baby. I'm so glad I can talk for me. Don't worry about trying to tell. No, don't call me and ask me, do you want me to tell Jesus? Baby, I'm going to tell Jesus myself because I know what I need more than you know. Can I get a witness? I'm going to tell him all about I know where I need to tighten up. I know where I need to. I'm going to him for myself. How is that possible? He gave us what is called access. That means now, look, get your, let me show you. Look at me like y'all don't believe me. Look what's here. Therefore, first verse, being justified by faith, we have what? Through who? Uh, now, before Jesus, there was no peace. What separated us? Our sins. Separated us from who? From God. What you mean, preacher? Well, remember when Adam and Eve in the garden. And when God then already took the fruit, and when God came in the cool of the garden, he called for him, and, 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 and they hid from him. He said, well, where are you? He said, I'm over here. I'm naked. He said, have you done what I told you not to do? That means that that act of sin has separated, and that's what sin does. It separates you from God. Because there's no way in, about, in, in, in their right mind uh, can keep doing wrong and keep doing wrong and keep going to church and keep doing wrong and keep going to church and not have some conviction. Some. I don't care if you mess up. You still got some conviction. And, and, and the word in you eventually is going to overtake you because you cannot stay close to the word of God and not change. You may fight for a while, but that word is going to affect how you react. Because when that thing keep working on your mind telling you, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have handled that thing like that. You know, you was wrong. But so what happened if we get caught up in our flesh? Can I get a witness? Flesh will make you act ugly. Flesh will push you out there by yourself. And when you be out there, you be looking, you be so ashamed. Has flesh ever made you shame? Oh, you all oh, y'all raise your hand. Y'all know flesh done made you shame before. What you mean, preacher? Well, I got mad and I did this. I got mad and I said this. And I know I shouldn't have said it. So what? Flesh push you out there. Now you're ashamed. But that's good. Because you realize, hey, I shouldn't have, you know, handled it like that. I shouldn't have handled it like that. Because the enemy, what he's trying to do, he's trying to pull the image of God out of you. 
He doesn't want you to act like somebody who believes in Jesus. He wants you to act like the devil. Even though, I may as well tell the truth, every once in a while, act like the devil feels good to you. Come on now. The last time you told somebody else you was not feeling bad. There was no pain. <laughs> Hallelujah. You felt comfort in the fact that you were able to tell what your view would tell them off. And you walked away with your elf mouth full of you did that thing, right? Devil got you out there there. Say, Ain't no harm. Come on back in. He done pushed you out there before. Come on back in. Say, Lord, I messed that thing up. I shouldn't have, you know, I messed it. I messed that thing up. I, I just tell it like it is. Amen. I'm, not, I'm letting the, 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 the devil jumped in me. I'm coming back, coming back, driving down the road. I'm driving now. I'm driving. The stern wheel in my hand. I got the brakes. I got the gas pedal. But the one driving is on the other seat. <laughs> Come on, brother. Help me out there, brothers. Help me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all know about that business. You know what I mean? I'm driving. I'm navigating this ship. You don't have no stern wheel. You ain't got no brakes. All you got is that mirror. You look in that mirror. Get your eyes out that mirror. You, you. But tell me where to turn. You're too fast. Slow up. Watch for the truck. Dude, turn over there. Lord, I'm, devil jumps at me. I get to ignore him. <laughs> truck coming. I'm scared to death, but I ain't showing it. <laughs> Amen. I'm scared to death. It's raining. I can't see. <laughs> Amen. But I ain't letting her know it, though. I mean, she know it now. I pray, Lord. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm just she that talking, talking like Lord Jesus, boy. and I said I'm gonna ignore all the way there. And then when you let that devil push out like that, something gonna happen when you need her to say something. <laughs> Amen. And she ain't gonna say nothing. Like saw that truck, huh? <laughs> yeah. But see, he'll, he'll do that to you. See what he's trying to do? He's trying to pull you away. But when you know. When you know, Lord, hey, I messed it up. Oh, God, help me with this thing. You know, I need, I need to get this thing together. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not passing the test, oh, God. And if you keep talking to him like that, he'll hear you. But understand that we are justified by faith. Faith in Jesus that that Friday he was crucified for our sins and when they buried him and when he got up with all power in his hand on the other Sunday morning that sealed the deal then no longer are we slaves to sin sin may approach you you may have to rest with it but you're not a slave to it you're not tied to it you have to you have to now you agree to it now before you 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 were tied to it you didn't have no other recourse but when Jesus died he freed us from the control of sin. Now I have what is called access to the Father. Now I can go to God. Because I got Jesus, he's bridging the gap between us. So when I go for God, because God is holy and sin cannot exist in the presence of God. So now God is being holy. How can I go in God's presence? I need somebody to bridge the gap between me and God. And that's Jesus. So when the devil says what he's done, Jesus, oh, but I see my blood applied to the doorpost of his heart. 